This is Unwind Your Mind Back to God, written by David Hofmeister and read by Tirana Singh. In today's episode, we continue unlearning the world with Book 2. In Chapter 7, this is Section 4, Part 3 of 5. Going Deep with the Early Lessons, Part 3 of 5. The other day, our friend asked why not get a job and work the spiritual activities in around the work schedule. As if you can do that. The very essence of this is you do not work anything into a schedule. You put God first in your mind. How does that look on the outside? Well, it does not have any particular form. But I guarantee you, symbolically, as you start devoting your mind solely to thinking of God every minute and every second of every day, you end up approaching what I call mysticism. That is why the mystics in India would go off into the woods and just sit there and do nothing or do some teaching but generally live very simple lives in silence. They were focusing their minds on God and nothing but God. The children of the village would go out and bring a bowl of rice once in a while or a piece of bread. It would be their joy to drop off a piece of bread to this kind, gentle, funny man or woman that was sitting out there in the woods, saving the world by accepting enlightenment in their own mind, by withdrawing their mind from the world. That is why it just seems on the outside to get simpler and simpler. Because what is the point of devoting your mind to trying to keep the game going once you see that the game of the world is in one's own mind? And the only way that you can let go of the game of the world is not through doing, but through meditation. Lesson 11 is a key element. My meaningless thoughts are showing me a meaningless world. Until you start to take that metaphysical connection, you are going to believe that there is an external world outside your mind that is real. You are going to continue to try to adjust to it and still try to make your way in it, even if it is by being a Course in Miracles teacher or trying to leave behind a legacy as a renowned Course teacher. Someone could say, Jesus left behind an enormous legacy, all of Christianity. But in the ultimate sense, he did not. It is a hallucination. There is nothing real about history or Christianity or anything like that. It is not like Jesus came, lived a real life in the flesh and then left the flesh to go to another real place, the kingdom of heaven, or to be on the right hand of the Father, as if that is coexisting now with the world. How does this world coexist with heaven? How does duality coexist with oneness? Do not get into the trap of trying to think of A Course in Miracles as a system and go around talking about it as a system. 
do not even get into the trap of trying to focus on it as a tool. The key is to go for the experience. The course is just symbolic of your mind's desire to go for the experience and nothing more. It certainly is not causative. Lesson 12 follows. I am upset because I see a meaningless world. That can also relate back to lesson 6. I am upset because I see what is not there. You could combine them and say, I am upset because I see a meaningless world that is not there. Insane thoughts are upsetting. They produce a world in which there is no order anywhere. Only chaos rules a world that represents chaotic thinking and chaos has no laws. I cannot live in peace in such a world. Workbook Lesson 53, Para 2, Review of Lesson 12 I cannot live in peace in such a world. Isn't that nice to know right off the bat that I do not have to try to live in peace in such a world? I do not have to try to be a peaceful person living in the world. I do not care how many people come to me quoting the Bible about being in the world but not of it. I cannot settle for being in the world anymore. It could be a stepping stone. But that line, I cannot live in peace in such a world, is pointing to something other than the kingdom of heaven on earth or paradise in this world. It fits with every other lesson that we are reading. My insane thoughts are producing an insane world. My chaotic thinking is producing a chaotic world. And there is no way that I can live in peace in such a world because it is made out of chaotic thinking. I am grateful that this world is not real and that I need not see it at all unless I choose to value it. And I do not choose to value what is totally insane and has no meaning. Workbook Lesson 53, Para 2, Review of Lesson 12 That is what it takes. I remember when I used to go out into the woods and deliberately eat bland foods. I would take bread and water and simple foods with no spices. I would spend a while just noticing the contrast. Then, when I would go back into the city, I would just notice the feelings about the soft couch to lie down on, or the movie playing, or the talk show. I would just notice the thrill of seeing a talk show again. Friend, so you are talking about just noticing there was still attraction there? David, noticing the attraction, noticing an attraction to the stimulation, noticing an attraction to the busyness. Friend, and the body comfort. David, yes, and the false associations, like with a long hot bath, in contrast to the sponge bath every several days in the woods. That is all that it comes down to. 
associations. There is still an attraction to this kind of insane thinking. There is still an attraction to being a personal, private little self. That is what is underneath it. It is not the long hot bath in and of itself, or the Hershey bars, or the long couch to stretch out on. Those are just the associations. Behind all the associations is both the desire to hold on to a private self as well as the fear of letting go into the light. Friend, the wish to be separate. David, the wish to be separate, still unquestioned, and a sense of restlessness and discontent. Here we are. We are back to, I cannot live in peace in such a world. I am grateful that this world is not real and that I need not see it at all unless I choose to value it. Sometimes there can be a feeling of being caught between a rock and a hard place. On the other hand, there is the fear to go within and question. And on the other hand, there is a specific irritation or grievance Let's say, for example, feeling used. It feels upsetting to feel used. And the only alternative is to question everything you perceive. Everything. Or would you rather feel hurt and used than to question everything deeply? That is just one example. But for each of you, Every time you are upset, it comes down to the very same thing. Will you continue to question personhood and question private minds? Or will you continue to feel blank? Fill in the blank. Whatever that is. Depressed, upset, restless, tired, fatigued, etc. Just fill in the blank and the form of the upset. Lesson 13. A meaningless world engenders fear. The totally insane engenders fear because it is completely undependable and offers no grounds for trust. Workbook Lesson 53, Para 3, Review of Lesson 13. The thinking is undependable and the world that outpictures the thinking is also undependable. The world is undependable. Even computers are undependable. Friend, I can vouch for that. David, computers are inconsistent because the thinking that produced the computers is inconsistent. No wonder the world is unstable. No wonder it seems to behave in ways that the mind thinks it shouldn't. It is not perfectly consistent because there is nothing perfect in this world. End of part 3 of 5 of section 4 of chapter 7. We will continue with part 4 in tomorrow's episode.